Good morning and welcome back to the Breakfast Biscuit for Friday, September the 20th, 2024. It's 6.05 a.m. and this morning we're in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 28 and following. And the title is, He Will Speak for Me. He Will Speak for Me. So I do apologize for yesterday's absence of a biscuit. We had technical issues arise on Wednesday night that could not be remedied by Thursday morning. And again, my apologies for that. But back to Friday, September the 20th, 2024. He will speak for me. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 28. You're rolled in for people uh, coming in on the broadcast, going off to work this morning. Could have some fog where you are this morning. 76 degrees on the way to 93 for a high. Feel that cool, crisp fall weather here in southeast Texas. Less than 10% chance of rain with winds light and and variable. This Sunday, we continue at SeaTex Church at our home in the Hollow Dome, 10 a.m. on Walden Road. Uh, we will be continuing the conversations with Jesus and more specifically continuing the conversation between Jesus and Simon Peter. Last week, we looked at the first section where Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he gets a glowing commendation from Jesus. This week, uh, Peter gets told, Get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, that's, that's rough. That, that, okay, what 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 do you do? Uh, the bad news? Uh, is there any hope for somebody that has been told by Jesus, get thee behind me, Satan? Is there any way back? We'll get to the bottom of it together on Sunday. I think you'll be pleased that there is hope, that there is a way back, that there is forgiveness. So come and join me. We're trying to get there early, though. We're trying not to go to two services, uh, but it'd be good if you got there early. So join us for that. Now, back to he will speak for me. Have you ever had to choose someone to speak on your behalf. I have never hired a lawyer for anything but making a will, and uh, and that, that's I'm fine with that. Have you ever thought about the fact that lawyers work for money? Many of them will say that they became lawyers to help people, and for some that's true. For others, maybe not so much. But a whole lot of them do it for money. Speaking of doing things for money and greed, Hophni and Phineas, uh, sons of Eli, got in trouble for standing in the place of a servant and being greedy uh, in the Old Testament and abusing the people. The high priest in the Gospels, who is supposed to intercede for the people, led the charge to have Jesus crucified. The priest was supposed to make intercession with God for the people, on behalf of the people. The human priests set forth in the law had two problems. Number one, they also had to attempt to atone for their own sins. And their sacrifices were never enough and would have to be done again and again and again. Listen to what the writer of Hebrews says. The law appointed high priests who were limited by human weakness. But after the law was given, God appointed his son with an oath. And his son has been made the perfect high priest forever. After the law was given, the law which points out sin, which is used of Satan to incite sin, which accounts sin and keeps record of it and becomes the schoolmaster ultimately that leads us to Christ. God appointed his son with an oath. See the book of Jeremiah to hear about some of that. And his son has been made the perfect high priest forever. Have you ever thought about why Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father and not standing? The priests of the law in the Old Testament were never seated while on duty. You know why? Because their work was never done. There was always more to be done to atone for sin and to offer sacrifices for sin. Jesus, however, is seated at the right hand of the Father because there is nothing left that is needful for him to do. Our sins by him and by his sacrifice on Calvary's cross have been atoned. Our eternal life has been granted to us by his actions. Our Holy Spirit has taken up residence within us, and we await the day of our completion with a joyful spirit. You cannot hire Jesus Christ to intercede for you. You can't bribe the judge. You can't escape extradition. But you can repent, and you can ask him to be your leader and your forgiver, your Savior and your Lord. And remember what Jesus said. These words bring me great comfort. Whoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. And you can have the perfect high priest intercede for you and be your leader, your forgiver, your firstborn from the dead, whom you will follow out of the dead and into life everlasting. 
I am so grateful that when I stand before God, my Lord Jesus Christ will intercede for me and will say, this one belongs to me. He is blameless because of what I did for him. I hope that's true for you. If it's not, we need to talk. I'm easy to find. Would love to talk to you, buy you a cup of coffee, buy you lunch, and, and let's make sure that you know that Christ is your Savior and your Lord. Let me pray for us. Father, we come to you today asking you to help us realize what's been done for us with Jesus Christ being our high priest forever. Lord, we thank you that he has made atonement for us, that we are blameless in your sight, not by any works of our own, but by his gracious sacrifice of his own life for us. Lord, thank you for raising him from the dead, and thank you for making him the firstborn from the dead that we might follow in his footsteps. Father, I pray your blessing on these, my brothers and sisters, today as they begin their, week and their weekend and their walk with you today. Keep them close to you. Be very real to them for your glory and for the blessing of your people. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. God bless you.